What's up guys and welcome to Graphic Designer Pro. In this video we'll be taking you through the best new updates in Adobe InDesign 2021. You can also download a free template file from the description below that you can use to follow along with this tutorial. Okay guys, I'll hand you over to Rory now who will take you through these features. Thanks Ross. So the first feature we're going to be taking a look at is the ability to create colours using the HSB colour mode. Now this is a seemingly very minor feature but this has actually been a huge bugbear of ours for years with Adobe InDesign and we actually mentioned it as one of our biggest dislikes of the software prior to this update. So what this is, if I double click on my fill tile over on the left hand side, we get our colour picker up. Now this is the default colour picker most of you will see if you do this and really it's a much more difficult way to create and edit colours. Over on the right hand side we have all of the different values that we can adjust as well like the RGB values, CMYK percentages, lab values but now we also have these HSB values. So they stand for hue, saturation and brightness and if I click the small circle next to the H of hue we get this new colour picker which most of you will be familiar with if you've used the likes of Illustrator or Photoshop and personally, we find this a much easier way of picking colours. We have our full spectrum of hues down the right hand side that we can pick from. And then over on the left, we can fine tune the lightness and saturation as well. Now I can also click on the circle next to S, which is going to change to the saturation view or the B, which is going to change to the brightness. But really we find the easiest option is to just stick on the hue colour picker as we can still adjust the saturation saturation and brightness from here as well. The other cool thing is that we now have the ability to add an HSB swatch as well. So I'll click that and if I hit cancel I'll go up to my swatches and you can see this has been added here. Now this is technically an RGB swatch as you can see from the symbol on the right hand side. HSB isn't an actual colour space but more a way of editing colours. But I'm still able to double click into this swatch and we could always change this back over over to RGB if we wanted to and we get the precise values here based on the colour we've selected. So I'll click OK. Moving on, we now have the ability to find objects based on the colour they possess. So this can be done by going up to edit, down to find slash change, or the keyboard shortcut for this is command F or control F on a PC. Now we already have the tab enabled, but you'll see across the top here, over on the right hand side, we now have a colour tab. So from the top drop down, I can select a colour from my swatches. Now you'll see we have all of our default swatches as well as the new RGB swatch we just created. But what's really cool about this is it will also include colours being used that haven't been added to your swatches. Now obviously it's a good idea to always add any new colours to your swatch library but there will be cases where you maybe forget to do this but this is where this is excellent. It's still picking up these three colours that we're using that have not been added. So if I select this turquoise colour I can click find next it's located this object as having this colour. What I can do is continue to click the find next button and this is just going to go through each object that contains this colour. This includes text as you can see up here and this can be a very useful way of finding objects based on their colour. I also have the ability to change the colour of any selected object so I could go down here and change this to our new swatch for example and I have the ability to change it just in this instance where we have this object selected or I could click change all which is going to change every object containing that colour to the new colour that we've defined here. But I'm just going to click change here and it's only changing that object. So I'll just go ahead and click done and let's move on to the next feature and that is the new content aware scale to fit. Now this is very useful if you're working with images especially if those images have specific subjects within them that you want to highlight. Basically here we have a landscape page but our image if I double click into the frame is portrait. Now I could just use the normal fill frame options like the fill frame proportionately option up here. If I click that you can see it's just going to scale the image up to fill the frame while keeping it centered within that frame. If I press command Z though we have a new shortcut that sits close to that option. If I hover over it you can see this says content aware fit. So if I click that one instead, 
you can see it's taking into account the data within the image and it's going to scale this so that the actual subjects of the image are being included in the frame. So this is very useful, it just speeds up your workflow slightly instead of having to reposition it yourself and it generally does a good job from what we've seen so far. Moving on, one of the biggest new features is the new text wrap option that allows us to automatically wrap text around a subject of an image. So we have a simple text box here and we have this image in behind, nothing special going on, but with the image selected itself, not the text, we can go to our text wrap panel. If you don't already have this set up, you can go up to window and down to text wrap. So if I select the third icon across, this is the option we're going to use to create this select subject option. Now, as you can see, our text has simply disappeared because we're basically telling it by default to not appear where this image is. However, if I go down to the bottom where we have type, you'll see this is currently set to same as clipping, but down at the bottom, we have a new option that says select subject. So if I click that, it's automatically creating a path around the shape of this dog. You can see it doesn't do a perfect job as it's having to base this primarily off the pixel data and contrast in the image. So it is going to be image dependent, but it's still done a pretty good job. We do also have the ability to grab our direct selection tool and actually move these points around ourselves if we want to. And I can also do things like offset this with this value here. So I could bump this up. Let's just type in a value of 50, for example, and that's going to push the selection out. And you can see our text is now wrapping around this selection. We also have options for how we want the text to wrap. At the moment, this is set to both right and left side. One of the best options to opt for though is largest area. That means it's going to stop any single words from breaking across to the other side. So that wraps up the main new features of Adobe InDesign 2021. There is one other thing to note and that is the updated share for review options. Now this was introduced in a previous version of InDesign but it's worth mentioning if you aren't already familiar with it. Basically we can go up to the top of our document where we have this icon here that says share. If I click this, we have an option here that says share for review. So I can click this. We have our InDesign document name under title and I can just go ahead and click create. And then we have a few options. We can invite people to be able to annotate this and put their own comments on it. Or we can send people a link, which we have down here. So what I'll do is just click on this link so we can see what we would get if we were sent this for review. As you can see, we've got the full artwork here that we've just been working on. It can take a second to load sometimes. What we can do from this point though is select text if we want to, so this is all editable, and I could do things like strike through text if I wanted to denote that this should be deleted. I can also make a comment, so I'll just say delete and then click submit. Let's scroll back up. I could also go to this option up here that says draw a shape and I could highlight certain areas if I want to. So we can make a rough highlighted area with this and I could say remove text for example. Let's click submit again and this automatically gets applied. So if I now jump back to InDesign, let's close our share tab and I already have my review panel set up over here. But to see this, you can go up to window, down to comments, and then review. Now this may take a second to load in these new annotations, but as you can see, we have the two comments that we've made. So if I select the top one, we said remove text, and we also have our delete option. If I click it again, it's actually going to highlight the text that I highlighted with the strike through as well. What we can also do is just click these three dots and we could say resolved if we've made these edits and that's also going to update via that link as well. So this is really useful if you're working on a document with numerous others or with clients that are signing off content as well. But that will round up our overview of the best new features in Adobe InDesign 2021. If you have any questions then drop a comment down below and we'll do our best to help. See you in the next one guys.